1938. The drought that damaged the horror film market in 1937 only got worse, leading to one of the weakest years for the genre ever. Horror output was severely limited, but over in France, director Abel Gons' attention was turned to the recurring threat of real-life horror at the borders of his country. Swiftly, he created Jacuz, a partial remake of his own 1919 anti-war film, to help combat against the mobilizations towards another imminent conflict. The last 20 minutes of the film, which features a mass rising of the dead, led to the film being classified as a horror picture. The very opening of the film lets you know they're not fucking about. A close-up of a white dove, a symbol of peace, bleeds out and sinks into the polluted waters of a fountain. The nearby statue of Jesus is toppled before artillery obliterates his fucking head. Point taken. It's a powerful setup for the next 45 minutes, which are spent on the front lines on the final days of World War I. A constant sense of hopeless dread contaminates these scenes, as the cynical, worn-out soldiers suffer continuous bombardment from their enemies. Platoons of 12 men are regularly sent out, but never return. When the characters we are introduced to are inevitably selected as the next platoon, the levels of tragedy, empathy and anxiety could give any of its contemporary horror movies a run for their money. They are sent out pointlessly to die. Soon after, the trumpets call out, an armistice is announced, but it's too late. Dying in the mud, the trumpets give the young soldier one last smile before he succumbs to his wounds. The doomed platoon's sole survivor, Jean, vows to his fallen comrades, somehow, that this would be the final war. Jean clings to his promises and haunted memories, while the rest of the world moves on and forgets. As the late thirties arrive and the Second World War becomes an inevitability, he grows madder and madder. Like the mad scientist trope of the 30s decade, he hides away and works on inventions. The difference here is that Jean is trying to establish permanent world peace, as opposed to world domination or playing God. He creates an invention of peace, some form of bulletproof steel glass? but it is stolen by an old rival and typically utilized as a weapon of war instead. Insane and desperate, he runs to the graves of dead soldiers, lets them know their deaths were in vain, and calls them to rise up. There is a real intensity to these final scenes. The previous hour and a half feel very natural and grounded. Suddenly, canted angles are all over the place. Some footage is sped up, whilst others are distorted. The music turns dark whilst the violent wind and panicked screams of the living overlap endlessly. The March of the Dead. To hammer home the film's point, the director cast actual veterans to play The Walking Dead. The horrors of war are made painfully real. In the original 1919 version, Gons used real footage from his time filming on the battlefields. For the lives of the dead, he cast 2,000 soldiers who are on temporary leave from the First World War. In a sobering reflection, Gons recalled how these men portrayed the dead, knowing full well that a week later they themselves would probably meet their untimely end. 80% of these men were killed in battle. Jacuz shouts its anti-war message from the rooftops, but, like Jean's platoon, the efforts were in vain. The wheels of the Second World War were already deeply in motion, the film's message is genuinely powerful, but it is also saddening. A case of too little, too late. To conclude, this is a film of three parts. The World War I section is bleak and well edited. The ending can be seen as a prototype for the zombie genre, whilst delivering a strong and timeless message. Sadly, however, the middle act of the film suffers from bloated love triangles and unnecessary melodrama. Jean's love interest in a young woman he has known since she was a tiny girl who just happens to be the daughter of his previous love interest, is more than a little uncomfortable. And it's never quite explained how this steel glass invention of his would achieve world peace. In the end, that plan was just as futile as the director's. <laughs>